Welcome back, guys, to the Curse Trials. We are on the final day. We got seven players left in the tournament, and we're looking to eliminate another one here with uh, Trump versus a Super JJ. It's going to be single elim from this point on. No more losers bracket. None of that. It's uh, it's do or die. Uh, these are, I think, these are the most unique uh, deck lineups in the tournament. Um, uh, Maybe not from the start, but these are the most unique ones left in the tournament with Trump running uh, the only Warlock, the only Zoo Warlock, and Super JJ. While his uh, setup does look pretty standard, he has that mid-range Shaman. And uh, from what I remember, his other decks are also uh, a little bit unconventional as well. I believe he's got a Malagos Rogue. Uh, yeah, the Malagos Rogue is something that JJ has been playing for a while. Uh, he's a really big fan of it. Uh, you know, I personally think that it's really cool to see him bring some new decks and succeed with it. I think a lot of people always feel like in these tournaments, you have to bring conventional stuff, because if you don't bring them, you're just going to get punished by trying to innovate too much. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the case. So far, the, the slates have been wiped clean. It doesn't matter how you got here, if you got to the lower bracket or the winner. Um, you know, single elimination is how it is. So this could be Chump's first series loss, and he still has to... Uh, you know, be eliminated here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I like that uh, we get to start off clean. And from here, we'll see if whether or not his strategy is going to pay off. Because once again, he runs into an interesting lineup of whether or not he can take out some of these traditional decks with one weird curveball thrown in in the, the Zoo Warlock. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I was very much impressed by the mid-range Shaman. I think we only got to see, like, really one game. I believe he played one game that was against... Uh, an aggressive shaman that had like the I don't know if it was the dream with the one tunnel trog or if it was the dream with the double tunnel trog but basically from what I remember that was the game where tunnel trogs were susceptible to BGH um, so yeah as a mid-range shaman there's not too much you could do about that uh, yeah yeah what happened that game was I believe his opponent coined a knife juggler hit the trog and then hit a three mana overload card and uh, it just kind of got out of control from there. Um, mm -hmm. But then he came back yesterday and was able to make a run through the lower bracket, killing RDU and winning with it against Druid, which is what we anticipated being a stronger matchup in. There's a few matchups, believe it or not, that Midrange Shaman would be great against. Uh, one of them is the Druid, where it feels like you can grab really good tempo, just like the good old days. Um, another one is Control Warrior. If you feel mm -hmm. like you have an opportunity to keep toteming up, and really seizing control of the board and get value trades. Uh, Shaman can definitely give a warrior run for its money, but um, the only semblance of control where we have is Dragon Warrior, and I'm not sure. Maybe it's still pretty good against it. Who knows? I feel it would be, but uh, he does have to go through Trump if he wants to showcase that. Trump is not running this, uh, this Dragon Warrior. He's not even running Dragon Priest. And I feel like the Shaman deck... That, that Super Jitter has brought is is quite good against these. Um, his main his main defense against uh, the Druid decks is that I think he's running Argus and several other taunt minions, and uh, he, he just buffers his health with uh, with these minions and uh, continuous board control. Um, it's really about just starting the board control. So you're not, you're never going to beat that like Dream Druid draw with like the crazy innervate shenanigans, but uh, you're going to beat most of the mediocre ones. And, well, we'll have to see what uh, what comes down when the time comes. Yeah, when you look at Zoo and you look at how good it was in the past at not only dealing with your board with, like, implosions and, you know, how inconsistent Lightning Storm was, a lot of the Death Rattles are gone, too. Uh, Trump instead relies on, like, Arjun Squire and a few other interesting cards like Flame Juggler in the Zoo. Mm -hmm. So... He's focusing more on, like, you know, immediate board tempo as opposed to, like, you know, making a very resilient board. It's interesting because maybe the Shaman gets better against that zoo because Shaman definitely struggled in the past against it. So, um, you know, it's it's, yeah. it's one of those weird scenarios where because Shaman has a little bit of early game with the, uh, the Tuttle Trogs, uh, I don't know, man. JJ might have something up his sleeve here that really people aren't really expecting. And maybe if he wins with it, it makes a stronger statement than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to see that deck succeed. I think it is very successful against most lineups in the tournament. But the more I think about it, when you're talking about some of these card interactions, I think the worse the worse it gets against Trump's lineup. Um, I mean, against the Shaman, 
He is going to have some issues just getting run over against the, the Zoo Warlock. The, he basically has the hard mulligan for Lightning Storm. I mean, Lightning Storm is, is the win card, but without Lightning Storm, he's not going to win that game. Is that two Doom Hammers in this mid range Shaman? What? Uh, well, no, this is Trump's aggressive Shaman. Um, oh, so I had the POVs flipped. My bad. Yeah. No, I, I'm actually not even sure if Super JJ has Doom Hammer. Right. It's just a theory of whether or not he does. But I would assume that mid range Shaman still benefits a lot from having some kind of powerful finisher. And if it's not Doom Hammer, I guess it's Alakir. If it's not Alakir, then it's. Bloodlust? I don't know. It's like it's one of those weird tiers of like, okay, there's very clear like good finishers, and then there's like he's got the uh, ones. he's got the Thunder Bluff Valiant, and he's running uh, several of the supplementary totems. So I mean, that could just be a finisher in its own. Looks like uh, Trump's Agro Shaman is uh, is on a uh, is pretty well off here. I'm curious if he's gonna go like these. These are like the top three hero powers, aren't they? You got life tap, steady shot, and fire blast as the aggro shaman. Yeah, druid's hero power of shapeshift. You can make an argument you want that as well. Mm -hmm. However, you're pretty much on the spot, like or uh, on the money. Fire blast is really effective as well. It's definitely not as ideal as the steady shot because the steady shot is just more direct damage. You know that shaman doesn't have access to belcher and heal bot. So again, this Hunter Hero Power has gotten pretty good. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like the Hunter Hero Power still remains very good, but the class itself is not being played, nor do people see it as very powerful in this format. Um, but perhaps if they were given time and ability to reflect on those performances, maybe Hunter would make a stronger appearance. I don't know. Well, it looks like uh, Trump is favoring the Knife Juggler. I feel like this is this is a play that can go really wrong, though. Um, like if, if you, oh man, everything can go really wrong. If you do feral spirits, uh, it can just get crushed. And if you do uh, knife juggler, and you don't get a juggle on the three four, or if the opponent has a buff, you also get crushed. Yeah, I guess this is your best shot of. Uh, being he just has to hit a minion here. Okay, that's good. Yeah, just not face, right? Mm -hmm. Another totem golem is uh, up for Q here, as well as the possibility of Earth Shocking with the. Yeah, I think with Earth Shock, yeah. I think yeah. with Earth Shock. The yeah, Earth Shock saves two damage. It gets removed on another minion, and it saves your, your 1 1. And the 1 1 isn't that great, but there are a lot of granular minions that uh, need to die. Right. Wolf Riders being a 3-1, or, you know, Argent Horse Riders. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, it might be like a minion which gets a buff off a of Flame Tongue Totem uh, if DJ picks one up, or if he summons one through the Tuscar Totemic. The Tuscar Totemic, you'd have to place it in between here. But, uh, you know, experienced Shaman players, they're, they're spot on with their positioning. Oh, and he does! Goodness. Instant payout there. Yeah, and he also can keep his totem golem by lightning bolting. Or actually, do you want to keep the the three one for the positioning? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think the positioning is relevant here. Yeah, it is. It is probably going to get punished, but uh, being punished with a, a rock biter used as your whole turn. Oh, and it doesn't even get punished. Wow, I really thought he would rock biter there. This is so good for JJ now. He can trade, play the. Um play the to totem golem and then have a pretty good board. I guess the yeah, other thing that you want to, to use to complete it would be like taunt totems from this point onwards. Oh, one mana overload for Trump means he can't play the doom hammer. The worst part is you have to play the rock biter here, I think. It's just going to get so out of control. Yeah, well, this is how uh, Shaman raced in the past against aggro. It would be flame tongue and then just pushing more and more. And there's maybe an argument to just go face with the 2-1 and just try to erase this board, but I don't think you can win if you do that. I I think that's just so optimistic. I think that's what Trump is thinking about. Like, Can I win if I just go face from here on out? I well, next turn you have X to 10 damage. The following you would have uh, 6. So, and if you, if you can do the Argent Horse Rider, that's 8. So that's 18 damage total. I can count over 
two turns. I don't know. So it looks like he chooses to kill off this. Tries to go phase, and he's gonna have to hope that Shaman just draws blanks. Because one thing is, Mindrin Shaman doesn't really have access to a lot of card draw. Oh wow, that Not card is real card. serious. By the way, there is a lot. This is when the game starts totem. ending quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's like Flame Tongue Totem on crack. Yeah, because these totems will gain plus two attack uh, every single turn you hero power, and on summon. Those minions get attack as well. Look at that. Just all facing. You know, screw it. Suit trying to, you know, figure out good optimal trades. I'm just going to go very aggressive. Yeah, Trump is under such ridiculous pressure. We, we saw him take the, the Hunter Hero Power, but I believe he's used it zero times. I don't even know if he's going to get a chance to until he dies. <laughs> he needs the Ragnaros Hero Power, uh, the Thorson Hero Power that happens when you kill his wife Moira. Yeah, there's like 30, 30 damage. damage to phase. Uh, How do you even stabilize this? Are you, are you going to hit the Thunder Bluff and try to kill it? It's suicide, but I don't I don't see what else you can do. I wonder. You can try to draw out an answer, but I mean still you have to get very lucky for that. So you hit it once with Doomhammer and then you Put the horse rider in, lightning bolt to hit face. Put him at 23. You already used one rock fighter, though. I'm not, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely not liking Trump's chances to close out this no. game. No, there's. This. This looks pretty doomed. He even clears a 1 1 token. I'm interested in that. Well, he might be thinking that. Uh, with the Doom Hammer and the card draw, he has a lot more weight to his hand than Super JJ might, even though Super JJ is playing the slower deck. But, um, looks like that isn't even the case. Yeah, not really. That Feral Spirits is pretty big. Oh, he's gonna have another Ancestral Knowledge, but just needs a little bit more. He just needs more health and more time, but he doesn't have really either. He attacks the 2 3, he's gonna die. Yep, and that's gonna be it. Super J is gonna clean up once again with mid range shaman. And this was the deck that, um, not in general, but against Trump's lineup, I was uh, I was a little bit worried for Super JJ. Worry not, Kriparian. You have uh, the mid range shaman in good hands. Super JJ has a, has a winning record, like a pretty convincing one, too, I think. I mean, he also won the lower bracket, so mm -hmm. right now the Shaman's been three wins and I think one or two losses, so yeah, uh, overall being a positive win rate, having a very strong showing indeed. Something that, again, we weren't anticipating, but it's a cool storyline. And even if he drops here, it's one of those things where you don't really attribute the, the Shaman to the downfall. You have to look at Rogue and Druid mm -hmm. as being more liable than anything. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was pretty happy with uh, Super JJ's Druid. I'm not as confident in Malagos Rogue as he is. I kind of see it as maybe a little bit more inconsistent than some of the other rogues. And I think inconsistency is a very bad factor against aggressive decks. But he, he did pilot the deck very well yesterday. And, um, you know, we at least have faith in that. Um, speaking of good decks, though, Trump's Warlock is, is undefeated in the tournament, I believe. I believe it's a 2-0 it's a record, just uh, swept both times. Yeah, uh, at least as far as, as we've seen. But well, you know, we'll, we'll see if uh, you know things go according to plan. We don't have that warlock just yet. Trump gonna stay on the shaman, trying to catch Super JJ's druid deck once again on the coin. No tunnel trog, but he does have a uh, Sir Finley to start things off. And that allows him to use the coin flexibly, so that way he can use Abusive Surgeon or a Lightning Bolt to follow him. Oh, this Druid Hand. Wow, same three! What is this? Not only is it the same three, I think it's the same three in that specific order. <laughs> oh, that has to be very unlikely. <laughs> that would, it's kind that of like would the, add... It's kind of like uh, Rafam. Six, six, permu six permutations, right? So right. that would be that would be like a three percent on that on that happening. It's not bad. It's like um, 
It's like the it's like the Arch Thief or Farm card where you get the same three in the same position every single time. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a tournament mode, Sir Finley Murgleton, where you just have to play the tournament card and you give you the three best ones and <laughs> that coin hero power on turn <laughs> two. You know there's something degenerate with a deck when that happens. <laughs> Well, uh, you, know, you also, I mean, it's its pretty correct if you look at his hand, like, he has all three mana plays, so... Mm -hmm. You'd rather just get the damage out now. It is pretty humorous, though, that he's using it now and not, like, for a coin follow-up Feral Spirits on the following turn. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I think he feels comfortable that he'll pick up a two-mana play for next turn, so... Well, who needs Feral Spirit when you can face? What do you do here if you're if you're JJ? Do you start cleaning up with your removal spells, or do you play Tempo onto the board? I like the Wrath play. I think you're going to get a better swipe throughout mm. the game. I like Wrathing on a two-three. I like just trading to the other and hero powering. He's going to swipe to clear, completely wrath mm -hmm. And is that a Wargan infiltrator? That's not. Yeah, that's a great one that. drop. Yeah. Let you trade into anything with two health, like a knife juggler. Really threatens it, and I mean, what what do you even really do if um, if you have a knife juggler? You probably end up playing it. So yeah, you probably end up hero powering actually, because you have the hunter hero power. Would you would you uh, play leper gnome or would you hero power here? Uh, yeah, it is tough. I think I probably would have hero powered, but. I have no objection towards any of these plays here. The the, the Leper Gnome puts out a little bit of extra tempo, and that's always very good. Oh, and that Azure Drake is very, very good. Uh, getting a redraw is going to start you off to uh, actually drawing some more um, actual cards. Oh, and there's an actual card, Savage Combatant. Followed by a Savage Roar on the other turns. Mm -hmm. This is looking like an opportunity for JJ to find another win. If you can stop Trump right here. Trump's starting to piece the damage together, though. <clears throat> Very slowly but surely. And these are just not high damage cards, though. There's no Lava Burst, there's no Doom Hammers. So he's, he's got a lot of direct damage cards, but he's he's a bit short. And uh, it looks like he's going to run out of steam before, um, before he's going to complete the, the 30 life cycle here. 5, 9, 11, 19 of the Savage Roar. Assuming all those minions survive. So not exactly the two-turn lethal setup that um, you should be afraid of if you're Trump, but you still don't want to take too much damage. The problem with Lava Shock here is that it only frees up two more mana, so it basically pays for itself for free. The Lava Shock might as well call it zero, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really make your play that much better. Well, it does a little bit. I think the play here would be uh, one of the three drop chargers and maybe an earth shock on the 2 1. I think you want to get it past the taunt minion, though. Oh, you think I so? I think the 2 1 wait, represents. Wait for, the, uh, wait for the Ancient of War. Yeah, or Drew the Claw. Mm -hmm. Just like something that Drew will probably put up inevitably. That is a lot of power to the two savage combatants. The five attack Druid. What? It's like you just use Bite. For free. Well, not for free, for two mana, but... Well, no, you still got the hero power. You got the plus one and then plus one armor for the hero power. It's it's very much like you got bite for free. It's Well, except for the armor. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, we, you, it's it's just a proper analogy, though. It's like you get so much damage uh, just by the effect of it. Well, at this stage, as the shaman, you're uh, you're playing as if you have certain draws coming right up. He has to clear a little bit because he's dead if he doesn't. Well, is he trading turns at all out he's dead anyway. Uh, yeah. I believe he has to. He has to go face. Like you have to assume um, a certain amount of risk playing this shaman deck, and the more and more you get behind, the more and more risk you have to assume. So Trump is making extremely risky plays, but you know, I think it's very hard to disagree with any of them. Pretty fair, but you know the big story is that this aggro shaman from Trump 
is down 0-2 and Super JJ one game away from going to the semifinals, making a deep run with his unusual lineup. Let's see if his rogue can uh, once again keep up the momentum here. Uh, it's Maligos it rogue, though. Maligos it, rogue. it is Maligos rogue, but you give three tries to it, so surely there's a chance for it to, to win a game. There is no surely in Hearthstone. We've seen that time and time again. Even, even, even today, even yesterday, there's there's no for sure. I mean, I thought for sure Saviz was out of the tournament earlier, and then uh, <laughs> no, not quite, not quite. Looks like he advanced. Um, I thought for sure Life Coach couldn't come back and do two, three zero sweeps after being down zero two, and you know, three three hours later he did that. <laughs> three hours later. Yeah. You mean just an hour ago? And he, yeah. and he finishes two his yeah. two reverse sweeps? Yeah. It's just over. Turn All one right. play from the shaman, pretty big and valuable. That's just the difference between being able to get a lot of damage, but no follow up play. So a little unfortunate. Rogue is on the coin though, that gives an opportunity to coin SI seven agent to answer this leper gnome. Yeah, very reasonable play here. Uh, I feel this is just a very tough matchup for Rogue. Um, I think Miracle Rogue, the main thing that it needs is time to come up with uh, a lot of draw and a lot of its combo potential. And the the one thing that the Malagos Rogue is different with is it's it's slightly slower. So it has <laughs> it has less of that. It, it it needs more time to actually do stuff. And this Shaman deck is is just going to apply so much mm -hmm. pressure before the Rogue can get things going. And um, I have my doubts that'll be enough. Wow, very, very passive play here from Trump. I thought um, I thought we would see a Wolf Rider face for sure. Yeah, I was expecting something along those lines. I think he just didn't want to get punished by a very simple spell that Rogue has to eliminate it. But by playing so passive, you give Rogue time to recover off of their use of the coin, for example. Like, Rogue wants to set up a dagger, so that way they can inevitably Blade Flurry. Well, mm. here's a question. Are you ever going to get a better Wolf Rider than this one behind a Taunt Totem? I guess not. I guess it's Wolf Rider in time. Yeah, Argent Horse Rider has a much higher uh, success of surviving multiple turns, plus it's turn 4, so if he wants a Pain of Knives, it's going to be inefficient for him. I think that was the best time to Wolf Rider, like you said. Eviscerate a 1 2. Fog. My god. I approve, okay. though. I mean, it seems good to me. Yeah. But, I mean, that's right there the hammer to kill a gnat. Jesus. And, I mean, it's just a pending threat of what the trog can do. It can grow so fast and so large that you have to take it very seriously. And when it's at the two health, you don't have the guarantee of another according to plan. We don't have that Warlock just yet. Trump going to stay on the Shaman, trying to catch Super JJ's Druid deck. Once again, on the coin, no Tunnel Trog, but he does have a Sir Finley to start things off. And that allows him to use the coin flexibly, so that way he can use Abusive Sergeant or Lightning Bolt to follow up. Oh, this Druid hand. Wow, same three! What is this? Not only is it the same three, I think it's the same three in that specific order. <laughs> oh, that has to be very unlikely. That it's would, that like would the, add it's kind of like uh, Rafam. Six, six, permu six permutations, right? So right. that would be that would be like a three percent on that on that happening. It's not bad. <laughs> it's like. Um, it's like the it's like the Arch Thief or Fom card where you get the same three in the same position every single time. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a tournament mode, Sir Finley Merkleton, where you just have to play the tournament card and you give you the three best ones and <laughs> that coin hero power on turn <laughs> two. You know there's something degenerate with a deck when that happens. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, he also, I mean, it's its pretty correct if you look at his hand, like, he has all three mana plays, so... Mm -hmm. You'd rather just get the damage out now. It is pretty humorous, though, that he's using it now and not, like, for a coin follow-up Feral Spirits on the following turn. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, I, I think he feels comfortable that he'll pick up a two-mana play for next turn. So. Well, who needs Feral Spirit when you can face? What do you do here if you're if you're JJ? Do you start cleaning up with your removal spells, or do you play Temple onto the board? I like the Wrath play. I think you're going to get a better swipe throughout mm. the game. I like Wrathing on a 2-3. I like just trading to the other and hero powering. He's going to swipe to clear. Completely rational. Mm -hmm. And is that a Worgen Infiltrator? That's not yeah, a, that's a great one drop. Yeah. Let you trade into anything with two health, like a Knife Juggler. Really threatens it, and... I mean, what what do you even really do if um, if you have a knife juggler? You probably end up playing it. One, so two, yeah, you probably end up hero powering actually because you have the hunter hero power. Would you would you uh, play leopard gnome or would you hero power here? Uh, yeah, it is tough. I think I probably would have hero powered, but I have no objection towards any of these plays here. The the, the leopard gnome puts out a little bit extra tempo, and that's always very good. Oh, and that Azure Drake is very, very good. Uh, getting a redraw is going to start you off to uh, actually drawing some more um, actual cards. Oh, and there's an actual card, Savage Combatant. Followed by a Savage Roar on the other turns. Mm -hmm. This is looking like an opportunity for JJ to find another win. If you can stop Trump right here. Trump's starting to piece the damage together, though. <clears throat> very slowly but surely. And these are just not high damage cards, though. There's no Lava Burst, there's no Doom Hammers, so... He's, he's got a lot of direct damage cards, but he's he's a bit short. And uh, it looks like he's going to run out of steam before... Um, before he's going to complete the, the 30 life cycle here. 5, 9, 11... 19... of the Savage Roar. Assuming all those minions survive, so not exactly the two-turn lethal setup that um, you should be afraid of if you're Trump, but you still don't want to take too much damage. The problem with Lava Shock here is that it only frees up two more mana, so it basically pays for itself for free. The Lava Shock might as well cost zero, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really make your play that much better. Well, it does a little bit. I think the play here would be uh, one of the three drop chargers and maybe an Earth Shock on the 2-1. I think you want to get it past the taunt minion, though. Oh, you think I so? I think the two one wait, represents. Wait for the uh, wait for the ancient of war. Yeah, or Drew the claw, oh, just like something that Drew will probably put up inevitably. That is a lot of power to two savage combatants. The five attack druid. What? It's like you just use bite for free. Well, not for free for two mana, but well, no, you still got the hero power. You got the plus one and then plus one armor for the hero power. It's it's very much like you got bite for free. It's well, except for the armor. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's we, you. It's it's just a proper analogy though. It's like you get so much damage, uh, just by the effect of it. Well, at this stage, as the shaman, you're uh, you're playing as if you have certain draws coming right up. He has to clear a little bit because he's dead if he doesn't. Well, is he trading turns at all out he's dead anyway. Uh, yeah. I believe he has to. Go, he has to go face. Like you have to assume um, a certain amount of risk playing this shaman deck, and the more and more you get behind, the more and more risk you have to assume. So Trump is making extremely risky plays, but you know, I think it's very hard to disagree with any of them. Pretty fair, but. You know, the big story is that this aggro shaman from Trump is down 0-2 and Super JJ one game away from going to the semifinals, making a deep run with his unusual lineup. Let's see if his rogue can uh, once again keep up the momentum here. Uh, it's Maligos rogue, though. Maligos it, it is Maligos rogue, but you give three tries to it, so surely there's a chance for it to, to win a game. There is no surely in Hearthstone. We've seen that time and time again. Even... even even today, even yesterday, there's there's no for sure. I mean, I thought for sure Saviz was out of the tournament earlier, and then, uh, <laughs> no, not quite. Not quite. Looks like he advanced. Um, I thought for sure Life Coach couldn't come back and do two 3-0 sweeps after being down 0-2, and 
you know, three three hours later, he did that. <laughs> three hours later. Yeah. You mean just an hour ago? Yeah. And he finishes two his yeah. two reverse sweeps. Yeah. It's just over. You. Turn one play from the Shaman, pretty big and valuable. That's just the difference between being able to get a lot of damage, but no follow-up play. So, a little unfortunate. Rogue is on the coin, though. That gives an opportunity to coin SI7 agent to answer this Leper Gnome. Yeah, very reasonable play here. <laughs> uh, I feel this is just a very tough matchup for Rogue. Um, I think Miracle Rogue, the main thing that it needs is time to come up with uh, a lot of draw and a lot of its combo potential. And the the one thing that the Malagos Rogue is different with is it's, it's slightly slower. So it has <laughs> it has less of that. It, it, it needs more time to actually do stuff. And this Shaman deck is, is just going to apply so much pressure before the Rogue can get things going. And um, I have my doubts that it'll be enough. Wow, very, very passive play here from Trump. I thought um, I thought we would see a Wolf Rider face for sure. Yeah, I was expecting something along those lines. I think he just didn't want to get punished by a very simple spell that Rogue has to eliminate it. But by playing so passive, you give Rogue time to recover off of their use of the coin, for example. Like, Rogue wants to set up a dagger, so that way they can inevitably Blade Flurry. Well, mm. here's a question. Are you ever going to get a better Wolf Rider than this one behind a Taunt Totem? I guess not. I guess it's Wolf Rider in time. Yeah, Argent Horse Rider has a much higher uh, success of surviving multiple turns. Plus, it's turn four, so if he wants a Pain of Knives, it's going to be inefficient for him. I think that was the best time to Wolf Rider. Like you said. Eviscerate a 1 2. Fog. My god. I approve, oh. though. I mean, it seems good to me. Yeah. But, I mean, that's right there, the hammer to kill a gnat. Jesus. And, I mean, it's just a pending threat of what the troll can do. It can grow so fast and so large that you have to take it very seriously. And when it's at the two health, you don't have the guarantee of another. Shiv. Shiv? Yeah? Or oh, you can Farseer. No, I like Farseer. Yeah, I like Farseer. The only chance that you lose... Oh, this is cute. I like he's this. Gonna, he's going to go for the Eviscerate Lethal. That's that's a great play. Did he get oh, it? he got it! He that's got it! Sick. Oh, my God. Super JJ. It's a super sexy plays. Excellent stuff. Well, Trump has been swept. But, Zulok is still undefeated in the tournament. And the next time we will know, Zulok is the deck to bring. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things, too, that we were saying on JJ's side. It's like, if he lost the series, it's not because the Shaman's fault. Uh, and yeah. if Trump lost the series, it certainly wasn't his Zoo Warlock. It seemed like he got uh, the short end of the stick a couple of times. Um, and definitely with some of his conservative approaches did not pay off mm -hmm. as JJ was able to really out-tempo him. Uh, really good stuff overall from Super JJ. Yet another deep tournament run. Uh, when people weren't really expecting him to perform well. So, I mean, I, the question remains, how many times is this guy going to continue to do well with unusual decks and lineups uh, until he really gets noticed? Uh, it, it's one of those uh, shames, but I think it's starting to slowly turn the, the, the public's opinion here. Hopefully. Um, he will be pinned up against Saviz in the semifinal later today. Uh, but uh, before we head into the semifinals, we still have some quarters to deal with. We got Strife Crow versus Ostkaka coming up for you guys. And to follow, it will be um, uh, G2 teammates, Life Coach, and Tice bat battling it off for that other semifinal. Um, yeah, should be pretty fun. Yep, that's right. Uh, and we're going to take a break just to uh, reset ourselves and get ready for the third quarter final. Before we do, we want to thank our sponsors at Geek Fuel, <clears throat> Curse Network, Hearthpone, as well as uh, Innkeeper.com. Check that out. It's a tool to help you with your collection manager for everything in Hearthstone. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have our third quarter final. So don't go anywhere. More Curse Trials continues right after this break.